welcome everybody um, to Quantum's webinar today, Working Together, Better Client Outcomes Through Collaboration. So um, we're delighted to welcome a number of panelists um, today for this webinar. Um, so we've got Peter Cracknell, Leon Savaris and Jeffrey Landers all here from Quantum. Um, and uh, so Peter is uh, in our Queensland offices and manages the, um, uh, runs the office up there and also is our vision and blindness technology um, manager in terms of products. Um, Leon Savaris is in our Melbourne office and um, Jeff is another low vision consultant in our Southern Sydney office. But we're also delighted to welcome Lisa Young from II um, and uh, she's a orientation and mobility specialist, I believe on the on the Gold Coast um, independent who we've um, been working with here at Quantum and also Molly Lurch, who's an occupational therapist with Vision Australia in Queensland. And I'm Rebecca Clark and I'm here in our Sydney office as well. So um, I might just ask people to mute themselves if they're not ready. Um, so just to start, um, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which this webinar is being presented and pay our respects to any elders past, present or emerging. And um, I'm here on the Dara land here in um, the uh, New, South, New South Wales. So yeah, feel free to share on the chat. Um, if you know where you are. Um, so just a bit of webinar housekeeping for people that might not have joined us before. So your microphone will be muted during the webinar, but there will be time for questions at the end. If you do have any questions, please either put them in the Q&A area, or, um, which you can tab to, or just click on it, or um, use Alt and H or Command K if you're on a Mac to get to the the chat, you can put questions in there. And if you're having any technical difficulties, please put them in there too, because I'll monitor that. And we are recording the webinar and we'll make that available afterwards. And live caption should be enabled, so you should be able to ac um, access those if you need. They are automated, so um, their accuracy, uh, I can't totally vouch for, but hopefully they're working well. Um, so, just an overview of how today is going to run. I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction to quantum and the aim of this webinar. We'll then have an introduction to the panel. Um, Peter is then going to talk about some of the assistive technology we have here at quantum for people with vision impairment. And then um, the different members of the panel are going to, share, going to talk, share some case studies of when they've worked with quantum. And we'll have time for questions at the end, and then I'll share our contact information here at Quantum, uh, here at Quantum, so you can uh, get in touch with us. So, who are Quantum? Uh, we're an assistive technology provider and company, and uh, we've been around for over 35 years. We originally started in manufacturing Braille devices, but we've um, evolved into now being a provider from a whole different range of suppliers, which is one of our strengths. So we can um, access a whole range of different equipment, anything from lighting, handheld magnifiers, right through to Braille devices. So we can cover the whole. Um, we also do some um, equipment and software which can help people if um, they have reading difficulties or so-called print disability for other reasons, whether it be stroke or dyslexia or um, We've seen people with cerebral palsy, ADHD. If there's got reading and writing difficulties, then yeah, we might have something to suit. We can work with all age groups and we are national. We've got site support centres, um, as our centres are called, in Victoria, in Mount Waverley, in New South Wales, here in Thornley, and also in uh, Kirrawee, and also in Spring Hill in Brisbane, but we've got other cons uh, consultants that travel around and that's what we do most of the time is travel around and actually see people in their homes or workplace or um, school even. Uh, and we've got uh, consultants that cover all the states in Australia. And we do also, uh, Peter also works with um, New Zealand as well. Um, we're an NDIS and Department of Veterans Affairs registered provider. and. And as well as that, um, people can 
get funding for assistive technology and we work with job access, the education sector, uh, participants are starting to be able to get things through my age care, depending on their package, and also people who are privately funded. So pretty much anyone, they can contact us. And we, yeah, like I said, we've got a wide range from a number of suppliers, so we're not beholden to one particular supplier for uh, equipment. So I guess the aim of this uh, webinar was really to talk about how um, how we work together with yourselves as allied health professionals and our clients to um, achieve the best outcomes for people. So um, the take home message is going to be really that um, we can be the technical experts on the equipment. We can do joint visits or help you try uh, help um, clients trial equipment. Um, while you're concentrating on the you know the functional impact and the holistic the whole holistic um situation for the client so you know with both sets of skills we can have a two heads are better than one approach so we do that really and we can you know we work with both um whole wide range of agencies including um vision australia guide dogs seeing difficult differently visibility uh, as well as independent um allied health professionals. So if people would like to introduce themselves, Molly, I might start with you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Molly. I am a occupational therapist and access technology specialist from Vision Australia. Um, do you want me to say anything more about what I do? Or? Yeah, by all means. Yeah, okay. So um, I work with individuals that are blind or have low vision um, across the age range, um, and I complete assessments to determine what kind of assistive technology that they may benefit from to achieve their daily living goals, um, or I help adapt their current technology to make it a bit more accessible for them. Um, and I also complete um, some training as well for clients in that technology. Um, and I work across a wide range of environments, so school-based, um, workplaces, community, and in the home. Great, thank you. Um, Jeff, you're next on my screen. Did you, you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, so I'm Jeff Landers. Um, I've been with Quantum for just over 11 years. Uh, my background is eye care. I've been in the eye care field now for 40 something years. Don't want to tell too much. Um, so I'm based on in the Sutherland Shire. So a bit like what Molly does, I go and see people, uh, students, again, all age ranges um, in schools, within their community, workplaces. And um, I work quite closely with a lot of private, independent occupational therapists who I give them the technology uh, experience and the optical experience and they do all the report writing and whatever is necessary um, so that's yeah that's my little brief outline mm -hmm. yep. Leon hi everyone I'm Leon Savaris I'm based in our Victoria office in Mount Waverley I've uh, been with Quantum for about three years I'm a vision technology specialist so I go out and visit people with both low vision and blindness products yeah Okay, and Lisa, go to you next. Hello, good morning, everyone. So my name's Lisa Young, and I own II Low Vision Services. I am I'm trained rehabilitation specialist and deal with orientation and mobility plus some activities of daily living. I'm based on the Gold Coast, but I do work in Brisbane and have an outreach in Rockhampton and Gladstone that I cover four times a year. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Peter. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Peter Cracknell. Um, so I'm the uh, manager for vision and blindness technologies at Quantum, which means that uh, I liaise with all the suppliers around the world to try to find the best products um, and uh, present a rounded range so that uh, that we can not just in terms of function but also a uh, balanced range in terms of supply um, we uh, though I'm based in Brisbane of course I support my colleagues nationally with uh, my expertise in Braille and so on um, I also uh, have a, 
a role visiting people in their homes and workplaces, just as, as my colleagues do as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so yes, we have here also in Queensland, though they're not here today, uh, Nick Powell and Michael Palmer, and, and they spend most of their time visiting people in their homes and workplaces. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I should say, yeah, we do also have, um, well, in, in New South Wales, we've just got uh, Nora, who's just started with us as well this week. So she's uh, learning the ropes. We've also got uh, Megan McAvoy in, in South Australia. She's also looking after Western Australia and um, Northern Territory. And um, in Victoria, we've got Stuart Andrews, who also looks after... Um, as well as parts of Victoria, Tasmania, he looks after Tasmania as well. So between us, we <laughs> cover. And um, yeah, I I look um look after Western Sydney and um for the Braille things, New South Wales and ACT up to up towards the about Coffs Harbour, Queensland border. So <laughs> somewhere up there. So, <laughs> so when we'll let Peter take over. So yeah. Um. So, Beck, would you mind just putting up the slide, my just my slide, and I'll just talk oh, to that. Yeah. For a moment. So, I'm just going to talk to these points here, and then I'm actually going to do a quick tour of the equipment. Uh, I, re- I realise that a lot of people, a lot of health professionals, um, come from other fields. They'll be dealing with um, mobility issues, social issues, uh, psychological issues. Uh, across a whole range of disabilities uh, and at all age ranges as well. So um, what we often find is that um, a lot of health professionals are, are not so familiar with assistive technology for people with vision impairment. And I think that's where we can come in with some of our expertise, our experience uh, to support them so that they can, they, we can all together, the client, uh, the allied health professional and quantum uh, staff, we can arrive at a reasonable recommendation, whether that's through NDIS or home care package or, or, for, or even for private sales. So uh, as Rebecca was saying, we are a print disability specialist. So that includes, of course, vision impairment, um, but also issues to do with inability to read through acquired brain injury, through dyslexia, perhaps. Uh, there are many, many reasons why people might have what we call a print disability, the inability to access print. And when we say print, we're talking about digital print as well, not just print print. So I've just divided up the areas generically here and I've put also some uh, some device names just as pointers. There are many, many options. And I guess that's part of the problem is uh, not only are some of the technologies unfamiliar, but also the detail between this or that device requires quite a lot of attention and that's where we can help. So when we're talking about print disability, uh, we have equipment that will help people to read visually, to use their eyes, uh, to, and that's usually to do with magnification and contrast. We also have equipment that can help people who are braille readers to read print via the braille medium. And uh, so obviously that's not going to be valid for somebody that, uh, that can't read braille. Um, but it may be perhaps the best solution for some of those people. Um, we then also have audio reading, which is where people can't read Braille or they can't use their eyes to read with magnification, and they prefer to listen to text being read out loud to them. So those are the three basic access points for people with vision impairment or a print disability, a visual magnification and clar- clarification, Braille and audio, text-to-speech. There's also with uh, print disability the issue of writing, so whether that's handwriting or typing, and and that could of course be uh, with a pen or it could be with some sort of a a keyboard, or indeed it could be writing Braille. I'll be showing some of those things too. And the whole issue of access to computers. How, How do we view a computer? We can magnify, we can listen to it, we can even attach a braille display. So a lot of the technologies uh, that uh, apply to reading print could also apply to accessing computers as well. These are all close reading writing tasks. We also have uh, issues of how do people read or view things at a distance. So signage in a supermarket or a shopping mall or in a, in a street walk 
and the the whiteboard in a classroom or in a seminar how do people view those things at a distance television um, those sorts of things these are all uh, going to require assistive technology to to magnify or indeed to read out loud stuff that's at a distance and though of course we've been talking about text primarily <coughs> and most of our work is with text accessibility there's also issues around social engagement so a lot of people that we see complain that they feel socially isolated because they can't recognize the faces of people as they approach so um, oftentimes uh, we would be looking the, the the occupational therapist would say look this has been identified as, a, as, a, as a, an issue for the person are there any technologies or any techniques that can help people uh, overcome these sorts of social barriers or engage people more in social activities or community make them more independent and less reliant on support workers and of course aside from reading and social activities people are very interested in continuing with or engaging in new hobbies and we have some options for uh, continuing with art craft um, crosswords all those sorts of things that people like to do in their spare time so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a bit of a panorama of some of the technology um, and my aim is obviously not to teach you the detail of how this or that works or even to remember the names of anything but just to show that um, we, and it's always a spoilt for choice, and that's a wonderful thing, but it does require some expertise from people that really thoroughly understand not just the technicalities of the products, you know, the weights and the battery life and all that sort of thing, but also uh, understand through experience where it has worked and where it hasn't worked, and some of the subtleties of where things may or may not work for, for various reasons, often psychological or. Um, to do with the family circumstances and so on. Okay, so I'm going to switch the camera around and I'm going to start with some of the visual reading things. So let me just switch my camera around. Uh, so what you see on the, the desk in front of you are some of our desktop electronic magnifiers. And these are larger machines that are very, very good for reading um, a, a lot of material. So for example, the machine that's straight in front of the camera at the moment is called the Clearview and it's a 24 inch screen and it has a sliding tray underneath it and if I place a magazine or a book or any any object under here we can get very large magnifications just by twisting a dial like this we can change the contrast and uh, even at very large magnifications, we can use the sliding tray to, to move the, the magnified text. So this is a very powerful, very effective uh, visual reading system. It, uh, we have people with vision down to 3% who can use this to continue reading, reading independently. So this, this would be perhaps the most effective vision reading device but as you can see it's a very large device it has to sit on a desk and for some people that is just really not feasible because their their goal might be around portability reading in any room or reading in bed or something like that and so in collaboration with the occupational therapist or the vision rehab therapist or the orientation and mobility instructor we'd be looking at those things aligning the choices of equipment with the goals that have been identified by the person, the things they want to, their priorities. So that's where we come in here. We can bring equipment, we can try people with equipment either in our site support centers or in their homes and workplaces. Now, there are smaller versions. So this one here, the MagniLink Zip, this one actually can fold away and be taken from room to room. And so you might imagine this could be used in a kitchen, but also used in, in a study as well. And then for maximum portability, we have a range of what we call portable electronic magnifiers. These range in size from about three inch, five, six, seven, 10 inch, 
and all the way up to about 13 inch here. So there's a very large range of different devices. And oftentimes, you know, we can't predict which one the person is going to respond best to. But perhaps they prefer the image quality of one. Perhaps they prefer the functions of having a handle. Um, so little, I'm just going to adjust my camera like this. They may prefer to have a handle and hold it with their hand, or they may prefer to have a slightly larger one with a reading stand like this. And as we go up in size, of course, the field of view increases, and that, that really assists with the reading speed and so on. So, so these sorts of devices, it's not just about the clarity, it's about the portability, how heavy, what's the length of the battery life and so on. And uh, this is where we, we can lend our expertise with, with, with a, a big range of different devices. So that's the visual reading. We also have um, the idea of braille reading. I'm just going to touch on that. So we have braille reading devices. This one here is a Focus 40. It's got little braille pins. And this is connected to a computer or to a mobile phone via Bluetooth. And whatever's on the mobile phone, a text message or on the computer, gets translated to braille pins that change instantly on this line here. So this is a 40 cell one, and this is a, just a, a 14 cell one, highly portable. Now, because uh, this is an area that we have some expertise in, it's, it's really very, very important that uh, allied health professionals do actually uh, pick our brains about this, because we, we have a better idea of whether uh, the person has the capability uh, uh, of reading the braille, writing the braille, and also managing the connection to computers and iPhones and all that sort of thing. So uh, there's also writing. So this is a braille writing device. This is like a, 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 an old fashioned typewriter, but it actually produces braille when I press the combination of keys here and it's producing braille here. And a lot of people will be paper braille readers. They prefer to write braille mechanically like this. So this, I think, is quite a good example of where we consider this to be like a pen and paper. So from my point of view, this is pen and paper for a blind person to write down shopping lists, to-do lists, and so on. But anybody that's not acquainted with braille would be completely perplexed by what this thing was and what its purpose was. So I think this, again, is where we, we can really assist um, allied health professionals to, uh, to, to identify, well, does this meet this goal or that goal? Should it be an electronic version like this one here? What will a mechanical one be adequate? So th these are some of, the, some of the things that we are looking at uh, all the time. We also have the issue of working with computers, as I mentioned. So with a computer, I've just got to log in, of course. We can, uh, though I can't see it very well on the screen here, we can magnify whatever's on the computer screen, and we can even use... large print keyboards for people that need high contrast on the lettering, uh, yellow and black or white and black. So. Once again, we can um, identify the right sort of equipment for people's access to computers. This could be through magnification or it could be through text to speech. In other words, the computer reading out loud. And when we talk about reading out loud, I mentioned that we have audio reading as an option as well. Audio reading is where the, the text is read out loud by a reading machine. It could be a larger one, like this clear reader, you can place a book or your um, just, a, just a piece of A4 paper just underneath the camera here. You press a button, it takes a picture, and then it reads it out loud through the speakers here. This is very effective, especially for older people who are maybe a bit technology shy. They don't want to be swiping and tapping and so on. It can be used by somebody who's totally blind because it's totally tactile. On the other hand, people may prefer a more portable solution. So this one here is called the AllCam Read. It's about the size of a marker pen. Bluetooth 
Five thousand two hundred and twenty-nine connected. I've just connected it by Bluetooth to a speaker so we can all hear it, but normally it just speaks through the little speaker at the back. So here, what we can do is we could hold our piece of paper and we just aim it, the uh, OrCam, at the piece of paper. And you may or may not see a red frame there. Social, print, disability, visual reading, clothed six, clear view, real reading, focus 40, audio reading, clear reader, or cam read, plus And so you saw how fast that was and how portable it is. So this could be really great for people that want to be more uh, out of the house with out of the house reading activities. For example, in a cafe, they want to read the menu independently. They want to be able to, um, to, to read a book while they're waiting on the, on the, drive, uh, on the bus. Uh, they, they also can use this to read signage at a distance. And I mentioned that distance activity was important too for people. So how do we read signs at Coles or Woolies? Uh, well, all we have to do with a device like this, or indeed uh, one that can be clipped to our spectacles called the Orcan My Eye, is we can actually just point to the sign, click, and it will read that instantly. So that will help with a lot of orientation and mobility tasks and promote independence. So these are audio devices. As you can see, there's no screen, it's just audio. We also have here a computer connectable scanner called the Pearl. And this is a scanner that allows you to scan multiple pages to create an electronic book from a print book and have that read out loud as well. So finally, I, I mentioned about social activities like hobbies and also face recognition. And I'm just gonna quickly show you. Um, the, the one I mentioned that clips to the side of spectacles, this is called the Orcam My Eye. And as you can see, it's very discreet. That kind of disappears when you're wearing them. And in addition to reading distant signage or close text or digital screens, it will also announce the name of people as they approach, as long as they are pre-recorded in the memory of the device. And there's a simple process for doing that. Within about eight meters, the OrCam in, will just discreetly at the back, the little speaker will say, Peter or Leon or Jeff. And so that gives people a heads up that somebody they know is approaching. Or that could be useful, for example, where they have a bit of dementia um, and they need to know that it's this staff member or that staff member that's approaching. We have had cases where this kind of argument about face recognition, uh, which can also tell you that it's a male or a female or a child, is actually a clincher in an NDIS report because people have anxiety about stranger danger. And that is a stated goal in their, in their plan. And the, the OrCam My Eye is the, the only device that can really address that point successfully. And finally, I mentioned about hobbies and craft work. We do have a range of um, magnifying lenses which are illuminated. So we have here um, magnification, light, and different lighting levels. This sort of thing uh, is very useful, not just for hobbies and crafts, but also for on the dinner table to illuminate the, the, the area as well, because it is uh, rechargeable battery powered. So we have a range of lamps, we have a range of optical magnifiers, and hands-free magnifiers for hobbies and craft work like this. So I hope this gives you an idea of the, the range of equipment that we have. Um, I'm just going to finish on a bit of a G whiz item called the Vision Buddy. And we talked about doing things at a distance. One of the things that people often ask is how do we watch television uh, at a distance? They can't read the captions uh, and they, they can't make out the faces because of their vision impairment. Well, one solution is to use a headset like this. It's a virtual reality headset called the Vision Buddy, Vision Buddy TV. And instead of trying to watch the television at a distance of 20 feet or whatever, we stream the television signal directly into the, vision, the virtual reality headset. And 
you wear this headset, the vision that you see in this headset is like you are at an IMAX cinema, and you're able to pan your head around and view this enormous virtual screen, uh, which you can zoom in as well, of course, on. And in addition to watching television that way, or Netflix or any of those streaming services, you can also stream in from the computer as well, so that you can have a magnified computer image in here, or a game like a like a, a, a um, one of those um, online computer games as well. And that might be very popular with younger people who are into gaming. So that's just to give you an overview of the. I'll switch my camera back. Uh, just to give you an overview of the um, the range of uh, uh, there we go the range of technologies that we have and there's, there are more within each of those divisions and just to give you an idea so that when we talk when my colleagues talk about the the joint visits they've done you'll have an idea of the sorts of things we're talking about okay back back to you <clears throat> okay thank you very much for that Peter. Um, so next, I'm going to hand over to Jeff Landers from Sydney, and he's going to talk about some of the uh, case studies where he's worked with um, local allied health. Okay, thanks, Beck. Thank you, and thank you to Peter. Um, Peter touched on a lot of the equipment that's there, and for a novice or a person that's not experienced in it, it's overwhelming. And one of the issues that I come across basically every day is I deal a lot with independent occupational therapists and orthoptists that might be working in a medical clinic, no, a surgery. And one of the issues is the patients don't want to use an agency. And the reason they don't want to use an agency is because either the patient's had a less than happy experience or the OT doesn't want to use an agency because they don't want to refer a patient or a client to someone else and lose them as a business. And let's face it, at the end of the day, everyone's in business, whether you're through NDIS or whatever, you need remuneration for your time and efforts and what you do. So it's a business for them. So a lot of OTs don't want to refer to an agency because they don't want to lose their patient, but they don't have the experience. So we deal you know, quite a lot with them, as Peter said. So a couple of examples, I've got a, a two that are happening right now, and I've got two uh, OTs that work independently. They work for a, a private business. And their clients, one of them ladies, is uh, in need of something. She works in the childcare uh, area. So the way we worked with her is that client came to my office with her husband and we did what we called a scoping visit. So there was no charge for that to start with. I spent about an hour with them. And we went through a lot of those different things that Peter was just showing you there, trying to work out what's likely to help this particular lady. They then have engaged with her own occupational therapist. And next week, we've got another appointment where we're going out to the home and taking specific things that we predetermined might be of use. Not will be, might be. And that at that visit there, the occupational therapist will be observing and watching what's going on and how the application of it is to do the particular tasks within the childcare facility. Because the, 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 in this particular case, the childcare facility is attached to the home. They run a business next to their home. So we're going to take out the different things. So DVA, uh, sorry, NDIS will pay for me to drive out to that lady's home. NDIS will pay for the hour or two hours that we're there, just as they would for a normal occupational therapy uh, session. Um, and then the OT will be writing the reports and the recommendations of what they want. But that's an example of where my experience, my understanding of the situation and what might help, coupled with the OT's uh, input, we're going to work out hopefully something that's you know going to suit that person. Uh, we had a slide at the very beginning there, and that's actually one that we did during COVID. And it was actually a photo of me in my home in Sydney, because I wasn't allowed to leave. There was the OT that was working with a lady in, in central New South Wales, and uh, we did a Zoom presentation. So I was talking the OT through how the particular product worked. So the OT didn't understand the product. She took it out of the box, put it on the table and together, because I was watching live, seeing what they were doing. I'd say, right, press the button to your left, press the button to your right, do this, do that. And she was then showing the client, which was her client, how 
this particular product worked. So then the client was using it and the OT was happy that the client was happy because it did what she wanted. She then went through the process of doing the uh, NDIS application. Actually, that was a home care package. And she went through the application with the home care um, to pay for a, a desktop magnifier for her. So I suppose the point that needs to be known is I can give thousands of examples where we're working with clients, but it's mainly the key message that we have is we don't take your client away from you as an OT. We assist you to help your client find a solution for their, their situation to you know, satisfy their goal. And that's important to understand because sometimes people are a bit afraid to refer on to people because they're afraid that they're going to lose them to their business and then the ongoing interaction. You might be providing that person a lot of uh, occupational therapy for other areas. Like Peter said, people have uh, multiple, multiple disability, disabilities and vision is just one part of it. So we're just helping you with that, whether it's blindness or vision, with that one part. I've got a lady that um, I went out and saw at the back of Liverpool. And again, this is one where the OT introduced me to her and we didn't know what she didn't know what she wanted. We didn't know what she wanted. And ultimately, one of those larger desktop machines is what she's uh, purchased through NDIS, plus the smaller handheld one, the smaller one for when she's out of the home and the larger one because she wants to read books. She loves reading books. And the problem is the local library and she goes through about six or seven books a week, she says, and she's just about worn out all of the large print books that are available. There's no more like... Her, her choice of subject is limited. So with the larger machine, she can now just get any book and put it under there and convert it into the effectively a large print book and read. So because she got the one with the tray that moved left and right, front to back, she could put her novel or her book on that and project it onto the screen and see. So that's some examples of of how we do things. I've also working within the schools. I'll have teachers ask me to come in and help a student within the school environment and that's fine. But then the child might want something for the home environment. So this education department will pay for something for use at school, but it stays at school. So the parents will then come along to the school uh, session that I do and then they'll engage their own OT to get something through NDIS so the student can have the same piece of equipment that they're using at home to reinforce when they're doing their homework or their study or their research or whatever. Um, so it's a crossover between what they're needing at school and at home. So I hope that this gives a bit of an overview and outline. Happy to take questions later on about examples if people want more in depth, you know, how do we do this or how do we do that? But I think the key message is we're here to help you as an occupational therapist or an allied health professional assist your client. We're not here to take your client away from you. We're to add value to what you're providing to them. I think that's the key message, and that works quite well. Right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Um, okay. Well, next up, um, we'll have um, – thank you. We'll uh, talk to uh, Lisa Young from II about how she's worked with Quantum and um, the team. So thank you. Thank you, John, for joining us, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I've I've worked with Quantum for a number of years, both in a former employment and currently as the owner of II Low Vision Services. And quite often I'm an orientation and mobility specialist. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. But quite often when I'm working with a client, because of the background I've got, I can see the need for other products that people might need. Um, a prime example, uh, we, I was working with a, a gentleman and he asked me about the ORCAM. He's heard about the ORCAM from the blind community and wanted to know what the ORCAM was. So I arranged with the local agent on the Gold Coast, Michael Palmer, to meet Mike and um, get him to the, the client's property with a selection of the ORCAM and different magnification that he could trial and see so I was there as an observer so the the trial was between Orcam and the uh, sorry between quantum and I could sit and observe the process so that helped me in the future to be able to let people my clients know the the, the actual process the walkthrough of what happens 
And even though the gentleman was really interested in the Arcam, once it was he was sat down and spoke about what he wanted it for, they they Mike had a variety of different magnifiers. And the, the end product was that the magnification was actually better suited to his needs of what he wanted rather than the Arcam, which is what his original query was mm. that he wanted. And because he manages a football team, a soccer team, and does a report every week, then he wanted to be able to use that to, to read and to uh, the magnification, to read his what is actually typed up and make sure that it's all, you know, it's all, all makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that, that was one case study where that worked really, really well, but mm -hmm. the initial referral was not what we actually, the, the end product, the end product was something completely different. So had I not had Mike's expertise, that man might have ended up with an Arcan that could have gone in the drawer and not be, not be used. So it is really good that we do engage you know, the experts. I have my area of expertise, quantum have theirs. Let's share our knowledge and, and obviously make it better for the client, which is the overall end product. Um, another really good example is I will meet Michael on a regular basis and just look at what new products are available. When we got the blind shell, I had a look at that. That then gives me the tools to know what's available and what will help again with my client. So when I was working on outreach, I got asked, um, a client who's had, she's got an acquired brain injury and she wants to read recipes and also use a phone more. Now, I, I took out the blind shell and I also took out the Clover 6 and I think I had the Clover 10 as well. So I had a crash course with Mike before I went away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I worked out in a place called Theodore, which is two and a half hours inland from Rockhampton. So it's quite remote. There's there's nothing around when you get there. Mm -hmm. um, the blind shell was was not for her. She, you know, she's happy with the carers. However, the Clover 10 was, um, it was amazing. She, she could read her recipes. She had a big smile on her face. She could change the colors and invert them. We found out what colors were best for her. So again, long-term, when any instructions are written down, we know what's best for her to be able to uh, read her recipes. And then I meet Mike a week later, return the products and... Yeah, yeah, that lady ended up with the the Clover 10. So that was purchased as well. That was purchased through NISQ. So it wasn't part of NDIS. It was another arm of, um, of funding. Mm -hmm. All these collaborations, I just find it really beneficial to have expertise on the other end of the phone. And I can either pick up the phone to refer or email and know that, yes, I'm going to get some, some good information. And I do think it's important to just keep up with what technology is out there so that we can cross-refer and it's, yeah. it's a better outcome for everybody. So that's my experience of working with quantum. It's very positive. Yeah. Well, thanks, Lisa. That's that's great. And that's a good point about meeting and learning the new technology because we're happy to do that, you know, whether it's a, a group of OTs in a particular business or as an independent OT, we know you're all flat out, but you know, we can do that. Or we have email newsletters and things that we can send around and our webinars and things that you can access via YouTube if you can't make the time. So um, yeah, no, that's great. And we can also, you know, we might get people, we can refer the other way as well. So if, um, for example, if it's mobility or something, then people might be asking about the orcam for that but that has a limited function as to maybe identifying things it won't tell you where you are or help you on a route or anything like that and um so we can yeah cross refer backwards i suppose so, yeah, yeah, yeah it both works, works both ways so, yeah it does, it does. It's uh, yeah. Very good. so thank, thank you. you lisa well i might now um hand over to peter and molly um to have a chat about how they work have been working together yeah okay um I might just start by saying um, that uh, just to f follow on from the point about ongoing professional development. Um, so uh, one thing that, that we've done with the, uh, the Allied Health staff at Vision Australia is we've done professional development sessions. We've gone to uh, 
about particular products or, or particular things. And, and that's how Molly and I engaged in the first place, I think. And um, for the, not just vision products, but also Braille products as well. Over, over to you, Molly. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like Lisa, I'm very thankful for Quantum. Um, I'm always calling up or emailing Peter with, you know, technology issues and whatnot. So very thankful for all the advice. Um, but yeah, I guess one of the, the examples from recently was um, I received a referral for a teenage boy with um, bilateral retinal detachment, so he's legally blind, um, but also had ASD, so autism spectrum disorder. Um, and his mother owned a braille device. Um, and the main goal was to encourage um, the client to engage in braille use. Um, so she had this device called a Mountbatten Whisperer, um, but she wasn't sure how to use it. Um, so she reached out. Um, and because it is quite a complex device, I then reached out to Peter. Um, and we had a bit of a one-on-one -on -one session where Peter went through, you know, the different parts of the device, how to load the paper, um, how to perform certain shortcuts to do um, particular commands, um, which was great. And we filmed it as well so I could look back on it. Um, and then after that, we actually did a joint session um, with the client's mum just to train her in the basic use of the mount button as well. Um, which was great. And so we were able to combine um, Peter's expertise in that piece of equipment with my background in paediatrics and ASD. Um, and then from there, we were able to kind of figure out some strategies and activities that mum might be able to use at home with the client. Um, so, yeah, that was wonderful. So thank you, Peter, for that. I don't know if you want to add anything into that as well. Yeah, just uh, yes, that's that's right, Molly. I think the the key thing we found is that we can liberate your skills in your and your attention to the things that you're focused on. So we can concentrate on the pre what we call the pre-training, but that's either of yourself or of the client, uh, just so that you can focus more on the other aspects. And and certainly when we've done things uh, with with OTs. I've, we've often set it up so that I will be doing the pre-training with whatever device it is. The OT will be observing, taking notes, asking questions, and always keeping it aligned to goals. Uh, and I may not be aware of those goals. I may not be fully aware of the background, the, the social background, or, or, or the goals expressed in their in their plan. Um, I certainly won't have any idea about the funding. Uh, so the OT is in charge of all of that. Um, but I can concentrate on uh, just uh, delivering the expertise about the product and the pre-training of the product. Yeah, and I think um, another part of um, that situation that kind of um, is an example of that was um, the, the client was really interested in music and piano um, and really engaged with um yeah, with music and Peter was able to demonstrate um, the little music function on the device as well. Um, so I guess it's an example of combining what I knew about the client, his background, what would engage him, and then Peter's expertise and how to actually implement that on the device itself. Um, and that ended up being the thing that really engaged the client in the device. Um, and from there, he's been using it since then. So, yeah, that was a good outcome. Great, thanks, Molly. Yeah, it's uh, it's always it's always enjoyable working with you on these joint things. It's great. Okay, um, great. Well, that's great. I think next we've got um, Leon from our Melbourne office. He's going to um, talk about how he's worked with uh, different allied health professionals. So. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, yeah, in Victoria, we've got our new office down here in Mount Waverley, and we have had a lot of OT groups come in to do um, professional development training in our offices. Uh, we've got a full range of equipment down here, so it's an easy way for us to show a group um, and give them a range of the full scope of what we do as Quantum. 
Um, the good thing is also we can often loan them equipment if they've got a particular client they're going out to see. So we can loan them a piece of equipment for a week or whenever they need. Um, they can come in and pick it up or we can get it out to them, which is good. Uh, so that helps them. And also, I mean, an example is with uh, Guide Dogs Victoria just the other week. I uh, went out to a regional centre with uh, one of their OTs to do um, some training for a lady who had a few disabilities and um, one of them of course was um, vision and the, the, we ended up with a few products that were actually fairly high tech, the vision buddy and the Orcam My Eye. And the OT from Guide Dogs said, you know, she was glad that I was there because those particular products do take a, do need a little bit of knowledge to get them set up and to get them working properly. And it's also good because we've we've used them a lot and we've shown a lot of people how to use them. Uh, a few tricks and techniques to make it easier for the person just to get an idea as to how to get the best out of the device straight away and get a good range of um, use out of it while we're there because often these visits are fairly limited on time and the OT just doesn't have time to sit there marking about trying to look things up on computers and it's good because we normally take a range of products. And like Lisa said, sometimes you go out there with one product in mind and you walk away mm. with the client wanting something completely different. Um, and we always, you know, we always go out with a multiple range of products for that very reason. Because and always one product won't do what everybody needs. So mm. sometimes they will need an all cam for reading or portability. They might need a desktop CCTV. They might need a, you know, a small portable magnifier. We carry all those with us and we're quite happy to work with people with that. Thanks, Leon. That's great. So, okay. So I think now um, what we will do is um, we've got time for questions uh, now. So if anyone's got any questions, please put them in the Q&A or the chat. Not got any questions so far. So, <laughs> what about we tell people how they engage with us, how they can do referrals or contact yep. us for? No, we, we can do that. I will put up the uh, contact details. Um, yeah, people don't need to. You know, there's not a. We do have a official referral pads, but um, the way people can refer to us is either um, contact us on our one three hundred number, so one three hundred eight eight three eight five three. And that goes through to our customer service team who are um, yeah, on hand to, uh, and they can direct you to the um, relevant consultant who can to work with you. Um, the other option is via info at quantumrlv.com.au. Just send an email with the, the details and we can, again, that, um, that'll that get the go to the direct consultant or you know if, if you've got our um you know let, know your local person want to know us we, we've got our own direct contact details so you can um talk to us directly so um yeah either way or there is also an option to refer on our website which is quantumrlv.com.au so yeah they're the main ways did anybody um peter did you want to make any closing yeah. remarks or yeah yes yeah, i think um a couple of things. Well, first of all, about referral. Um, when we talk about referral, as, as Jeff was mentioning, it's not a case of, oftentimes people think of referral as handing over a, mm. a, a client to another agency or another person. That, that's not the way we work in this situation. Um, so it, it's more about that we have, we, you give us the sufficient information so that we understand the basic needs. We can say, well, perhaps we should do this via Zoom or perhaps we should do this by a joint visit or perhaps they could come to our showroom. So um, that's what we mean by referral there. It's just about just sufficient information so that we can, we can uh, you know, recommend a further course of action. Um, and just, uh, just also to say that this is a two-way street too, so that uh, when we are asked to do recommendation or give advice we will feed that back usually by email as a summary uh, we we keep a record of the out outcome of any of our visits or joint visits 
mm -hmm. on our systems, but we also send a copy back to the people we're collaborating with, so that can support whatever reports they're writing. We don't write the reports, but we can provide technical information, but also observational information as well. Uh, so that, that will support you. Um, and I guess my final message would be that, and I hope we haven't overwhelmed everybody with all the tech and, and perhaps <laughs> scared people off. That's the whole point is that's what we do. Uh, so we, we want to make it, we want people to engage more with people with vision impairment. We don't want to put it into the too hard basket. There's plenty of expertise available to assist you to, to get better outcomes for your clients. Thanks, Peter. And yeah, we, we know the technology is always changing. So it'd be, you know, particularly if you're work, working across a range of disabilities, it would be impossible to keep up with it all yourself. So yeah, that's why we're, we're here. We're, we're, we can be the techs. And <laughs> so, yeah. so, well, thank you very much, um, everyone for joining us, uh, particularly Molly and uh, Lisa and, uh, yep, Leon and Jeff and Peter. So um, by all means, contact us and I'll, we'll get the recording out as um, soon as that's ready. So thanks. Bye. Thanks all. Thank you very much. Yes, bye.